Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to another lecture on Sage 50 2021 edition. So in this lecture, what we're going to do is we are going to cover chapter 3B. So in the last lecture, what we have done is uh, the way these recordings are working is we did chapter 2A and 3A in the first part of the course. In the second part of the course, we started last week with chapter 2B, which we had went into the account receivable module, looked back what we have done in chapter 2A, then we actually continued with the receiver module, looked at some of the complicated or the unusual transactions that happens in the receiver module, and then we looked at uh, some transactions that were very specific, such as write-off of uh, invoices, uh, doing the NSF entry, how the discounts works. So we did those kind of things in chapter 2B. Now, the similar way we are going to do chapter 3B today, you guys have done chapter 3A already in the first part of the course, where we looked at some of the accounts payable transactions, such as recording invoices, which includes purchase of inventory and recording invoices for the goods and services uh, that we received and uh, recording some purchase orders, uh, doing some payments for those invoices and doing miscellaneous payments as well. And now what we're going to do is now we're going to get in deeper for the paper module and look at some of the transactions that are not usual on day to day basis, but it does happen and how do we record those transactions. So in chapter three, B, we are continue with the company called Tyson's twice. And uh, to start with this, you can either take your file that you already have from chapter three, a that you finished and you can either work on that file or you can take the database file that's available on chapter 3b so you're going to download that file unzip it and then work on these exercises so exercises that are covered in chapter 3b includes from 22 all the way to chapter exercise 37 so first you look at how do you open the sage 50 using the 3b uh, so obviously you will download the file unzip it, then open the file using Sage 50 2021. Then you look at the cash flow statement. I'll show you guys how to fill the cash flow statement. This is the first time we're doing the cash flow statement. And then we look at the debit card purchases. Now this is a normal practice. If the company has a debit card, they may give that debit card to the, to the manager and then the manager will go make some purchases. How do we record those transactions in the accounts payable module? Then we look at the, one of the transaction recording a payment with a non-merchandise discount, okay? So I'll show you a transaction which we'll record first and then and then I'll show you how does it work if you have a non-merchandise discount, what is the step that we have to take. Record Recording a purchase from a one-time vendor, so if you have a cash purchase, you can do that one-time vendor purchase as well. Recording some bank entries, how do we record that? We look at if the owner withdraws the money, how do we record that as well? Recording the lease payment, that's also something that will cover this class. Now this is important, how do we calculate and remit the HST? So the HST need to be paid to CRA on 15th of the following month. If it's monthly filing, if it's a, a quarterly filing, then it has to be paid out a month after the quarter ends. So we look at how do we calculate the amount and how does we make a payment of those? Then we look at the recording of invoice with the reduced HST. If the HST amount is lesser than a normal price, then how do we uh, do the invoice for that? Creating an inventory uh, and recording a purchase invoice. If you have a new inventory that we purchased, how do we tackle that kind of transaction? Making a credit card payment, and then at the end, pulling, pulling uh, the income statement together with the comparative numbers, which is looking at the prior month or prior year, okay? And then obviously these are uh, statements uh, that uh, transactions or the report that we can print, which you guys have been printing and I'll show you guys again at the end of the uh, class today. So it is important that you go complete these exercises by yourself. So when I'm going to do this, I'm not going to be going through these exercises independently. These are the things that you are going to be doing it by yourself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to touch base on each of these topics and make sure we talk about it and I'll show you how that works on, this, on your software. 
So after you finish chapter 3b, I definitely want you guys to work on the challenge exercise and the challenge exercise that we have that I'm assigning from this chapter is chap exercise 3b1 networks. Okay, so you are going to be completing this on your own and the same way that you have done the previous assignment uh, challenge exercises, you are going to be downloading the file which is 3b1 network and complete these transactions. Once you complete it, you save these reports on, uh, on your computer in a PDF format and then I'll give you journal entries that you can compare to see if you did that correctly or not. Okay, and then obviously if you have any question on these exercises, uh, chapter 3b, then you guys can bring those questions to the class in the next week class. All right, so that's about the chapter. Now what we're going to do is now we're going to try these exercises uh, together and uh, you'll see how that works as well. So now to start this chapter 3b, there's two ways you can do that. One, you can either take a file which is already on your computer and you can download it on uh, from uh, 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 if you have a file from chapter 3a that you finished by yourself you can use that and continue with chapter 3b but if you're not comfortable using your own file what you can do is you can look at the 3b right here download this file and obviously you get these messages oops i'm gonna do it again I'm going to say keep the file again. I said keep anyways. Then we'll download it on my computer. Once it's done, I'm going to relocate the file, which is right here. Right click, or I can just double click on it. Uh, it may give me the warning again. Let's see, it does. I said run anyways. Then it's going to ask me the location. Where do you want to unzip? So what I will do is I'm going to have it go to, okay, so in this computer, I don't have the 2021. So I'm going to rename this file as fall 2022. And then I'm going to give the location of this file. So I'm going to browse, I'm going to say, okay, save this file in C drive for fall 2022 under the chapter database fall. Okay, there's a file right there, so I'll make sure that chapter database fall. So I'm gonna do so here I'm going to say okay download it in that folder unzip what in once it's unzipped it's going to unzip this entire folder and then once it's done oh wait we close that now we are going to open stage 50 2021 And here we select the file as selecting existing company and then relocate the file. Uh, this is saved on my C drive. Fall 2022 database file, chapter 3B, twice open. Ask me the session date, April 15. So I select April 15 as the session date, and then I get started on working on this file. Okay. So now my file is open, and this is where we're gonna get started with Chapter 3B. Okay. Now again, as I always tell you guys at the beginning of my recording, this is not Chapter 3B exercise that I'm going to be doing on screen. 
I have made up some transactions which I'll be recording so that way we practice exactly what you'll be doing in chapter 3b okay so don't assume that if you are doing this along with me on this video then you can skip the channel exercise no that's not the case you are doing chapter 3b on your own without my my guidance but reading it from the textbook exactly what you were supposed to do so that would have been your first exercise where you open the file and have it ready on your computer and then the second exercise that we have is 23 is where you're pulling up your cash flow statement so similar to pulling up the other statements you find your cash flow statements under the reports and you can do that under the financials and say cash flow projection and then you have two ways to look at it either you can look at it by summary or detail so in this case we're gonna select summary and then select the checking account and press ok now i'll show you guys the detail of that as well so this is a summary summary of the cash flow statement so in the summary form it's simply telling you how much cash you have in your bank account and what are the total receipts that we're going to receive so in this company we um, file we are not recording the account receivables if you do it will tell you how much you money going to receive from your customers then based on the due dates that you have on have on the invoice it tells you how much payment you're going to make and what are the recurring general entries which means that remembers how many payments are going to be made in the next 30 days it will pick those ones and saying that the ending balance that you are going to have will be 3,653, okay? And that's what in nutshell is your, uh, your projection for the next 30 days, okay? So this information comes very handy if you have all your receivables and paper modules entered and all the due dates are correct in your system. <clears throat> okay, so next we have is recording a debit card transaction. So debit card transaction is nothing different than recording a cash payment, okay? So to recall that, you, there's two ways you can do that. You can either do a payment and make a pay expenses, or if it's an inventory purchase, then you have to do is by purchase, create a new invoice. Both the methods are correct, but in the miscellaneous pay expenses, you cannot record payment of, a, payment of an inventory item, okay? So for that, you definitely have to go into Purchase invoice, create a new invoice, and then when you create a new invoice, you are selecting the vendor that you, so you're selecting a transaction time, which is invoice, changing the method from pay later to the debit card. And then here we select the vendor. Okay, let's say this is, uh, um, this is, uh, which vendor are we gonna pick? Pick up, send this luggage, where is that? Okay, just pick Mark and Twice Manufacturing, we'll pick this up. And then we select, enter the invoice number, let's say it's 9876, and the date is April 15. So we're not converting a purchase order, so okay, see, it changes back to pay later. We're gonna have to make sure we change that back to the debit card. And then here you select the item number, so which item are we buy, uh, buying? We are buying the large cars. How many of those? We're buying 10 of those large cars and the price is $32. And you don't have to worry about the account. It will pick up the inventory account by itself. Now just watch for it. If you are giving a discount on the early payment, you by default it picks up because that's how you are setting this company. But if you're not giving a discount, you have to make sure you remove that. So always remember the instructions will be given to you that if you are buying it at a 2% discount, then you make sure you enter that. But if there is no 2% discount, you have to remember to remove that. And now you know the general entry will be debit your inventory, debit your GST, HST, and you credit your bank account. So let's just double check that entry. So that is my entry here. And now once you finish, what we do is we simply go in and post that transaction. And that is done and you close it. Okay, so this is how you will record a debit or credit, or debit purchase, okay? 
Now, if this was a credit card purchase, this the nothing changes. All you're gonna have to do is instead of a pay later, you're gonna say it's a credit card, and then you record a payment as usual. And the only difference is instead of uh, crediting the bank account, it's gonna say credit to the credit card receivable. And if you set up the credit card, there will be a processing fees that will charge, but that's not the case because this is a payment you're making. So it will just simply credit your credit card payable account instead of bank account. Okay, so that's the difference between if you're doing a payment through a credit card versus making a debit card payment. Now, the other transaction that I wanna show you guys is a payment for a non-merchandise discount, okay? So you know that if you go in and make a payment for any invoice, okay, so let's say I wanna make a payment to an outstanding invoice. So I go in, payment, and pay invoice, okay? So when I make a payment, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to ask me as who you making a payment and what you're making a payment for, okay? So in that case, what you're doing is you're simply coming in here, selecting the vendor that you wanna make a payment to. So here in this case, we say we're making a payment to NES Business Form, okay? And now this vendor has this invoice outstanding and be issuing a check and you see that there's a discount available for $6. So if I go and select the option as discount taken and select the prepayment, it's gonna uh, deduct that money and put that amount as $333. So now if I go into display a payment journal, we know that when we actually set up the discount account, we said anytime there's a discount, post it to purchase discount. So this purchase discount account is actually related to your cost of goods sold, okay? So we know that by default, it's not gonna give me any option, but by default, it's gonna go into the purchase discount account. But I know the, this vendor that I don't buy inventory from this vendor. So what I do is I actually purchase office supplies this for this vendor. So when I purchase the supplies, I put the amount in the prepaid supplies account. So the cost of the $339 that I paid is not sitting in the cost of goods sold account, but it's sitting in a prepaid office supplies. So when I get a discount of $6, that discount should be recorded in a prepayment invoice uh, as well, prepaid office supplies. So therefore this $6 is incorrect. So now you have to remember is anytime you are recording a discount for a non-merchandise vendor, you have to record a discount entry separately. Okay, so you cannot select this $6 here. You have to skip this entry. You're gonna have to disregard this entry and record the discount separately. So I'm gonna close this screen and disregard this transaction. So anytime this happens, you have two entries to do. Entry number one is to record the discount, okay? So for that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to into purchase, create a new invoice, and we are going to select the same vendor, which is NAS business form. And in, in the invoice section, we're gonna say discount, and we leave the date as the same date that we're making a payment. We don't worry about putting the item because it's not an inventory purchase. And here we can say is that discount on inventory. And the amount we're going to select is minus six because it's not a positive amount and we remove the taxes because we don't apply the discount on, uh, we don't charge HST on the discount amount. So we remove the $6 discount column, the HST, and then you see that now this will be crediting the prepaid office supplies and we remove the terms because it is irrelevant for us. Now, if you look at the general entry, the general entry will be debit my accounts payable and credit office supplies. So it's reducing my accounts payable by $6, the discount that I was supposed to get. What we're we doing is instead of debiting the purchase, this account, purchase discount account, we credited the prepaid office supplies by $6 and reduce our accounts payable by $6 as well. So, Anytime that happens, you have two entries to do. First one will be recording a discount. And this is how you will record a discount, create a new invoice, pay later, put the invoice number as a discount, select the vendor, 
put the date which is the same date as a payment date enter the quantity as one put a description as i discount on the invoice if you have the invoice number you can enter the invoice number as well and put the discount amount which we copied or or write down written down from the last entry which is minus six dollars remove the taxes and remain the gl account that we're supposed to go and then post it now step one is done which is recording of a discount now you're going to step number two is making a payment so now we're going to say payment pay purchase invoices and select the same vendor and now you see there's two lines here we have first line for the invoice so now you're not going to do discount taken because we're going to select the full amount and then we discount is showing up in the second line and then we just put minus six right here and now this six dollar that would have been subtracted from here is being subtracted from this line we're still making a payment of 333 dollars now if you check your journal entry the entry will be simply debit accounts payable and credit bank account the six dollars that we used to have in the previous entry which we disregarded was debit accounts payable for 339 and credit bank account with 333 and credit purchase discount we split that entry into two the first one was a debit accounts payable by six dollars and credit prepaid prepaid office supplies which was done in step one and step two we only recorded an entry for the make net payment of $333 which is debit accounts payable and credit bank account okay now you post this particular transaction okay and then done so if you ever see a, a little hint from me saying that this payment is made to a vendor and the vendor name you can recall that this was a vendor that you actually purchased the office supplies or a non-merchandise item. You will know right away that this is a discount on a non-merchandise, okay? And you know that there will be two entries and you have to record them separately. It doesn't matter how many times I tell this to my class, there's only five to 10 percent of those students will do it right. So again, I'm going to put a note out there is that this entry will definitely be in your final exam. You have to watch for it and see if there's discount applicable, if there's discount is a merchandise discount or a non-merchandise discount. If it's a merchandise discount, you don't have to do anything, record it as we always do. But if it's a non-merchandise discount, then you have to do that into two-step process. Now we close that. Okay. So that was recording of a non merchandise discount. Okay. The next exercise we have is we are doing a one time vendor payment. So that is very simple. All you're going to do is payment, pay expenses. Okay. And then you see here is make other payment and you're making a payment by a check. And who are you making a payment? If it's a one time vendor, for example, I just met a client and then the client was giving me a great deal to put to uh, to set up my website then what i did i created a company uh i just created write, uh, write down a check for that so let's say that it was intelli task company okay and then here it gives me option do you want to do a quick ad full ad or a one time if I click continue, it is a one-time vendor. That means I'm not gonna add in my vendor list. But if I do a quick add, it will just simply add a customer name, I mean vendor name, nothing else. Then you can add more information later on. But if you do full ad, obviously it will just take you to a vendor setup window. Then you have to enter all the information. For this one, we say we're not gonna deal with this customer vendor after that. So we just do a one-time vendor. And here we select the account. So this one is advertisement. So I'm going to look for advertisement account. Super name. So there it is. And uh, we can say marketing. <clears throat> and the amount we paid is 200 plus taxes. So we select 
the taxes which is Ontario HST 13% and now we can put the invoice number if we have and I'm saying uh, website development okay and now I can check my journal entry it will be a, a debit to the expenses debit to the HST and credit my bank account and then I click post okay I'm recording all these transactions on April 15 but uh, you have to make sure you watch if the transactions are changing you're gonna have to change your session date and the date uh, session date and the transaction date according to that okay so the next transaction we have is recording some non merchandise entries okay which is I mean uh, for the bank reconciliation entries for example I'm going through a bank reconciliation I, and I looked at the bank account and I found there are two entries that that happens uh, there's a payment for bank charges there is a payment for uh, a bank loan payment uh, lease payment that happened so the bank charges are not recorded right here the bank charges are recorded in the company module so you go into a company module look at the journal entry you can either create a journal entry or if you have the entry recorded and saved as a recurring entry you can record that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say create a journal entry when you're on this window of creating a journal entry you have two options you can manually write down the entry that you have or you can see if you have a recurring entry and you want to just recall that so I click on this icon it will open up all the recurring entries that you have and you say okay you know what this is great uh, somebody who's doing the books previously have saved these entries as the recurring entries so it definitely saves a lot of your time so now you're gonna have to do is just pull up this bank entry and it's gonna pull up these transactions and show the amount okay say bank charges source was there bank charges to uh, you can just put a month so April 2022 and then debit bank charges the amount if it's different then you change the amount let's assume this was $35 not 32 you change the amount and post that transaction gives you warning saying you want to update this amount if you want you can press yes and then for next month it will remember $35 instead of $32.10 okay so that is done and then we will look at the next transaction we have is recording of a lease payment okay so lease payment happened on April 18 for example and then we have to make sure we change the session date to April 18 and now we go into the journal entry again and then we click on the recurring entry and click the van lease payment and it will pull up the exact entry that was recorded last time and now it shows up the next three date based on the the transaction is April 21 and we said no this is actually payment made on April 18 so you select April 18 but if it's a different date because this has to match with your bank statement okay now if the amount changes you change that okay so say okay let's assume the 400 was the lease payment 20 was was this the loan was 302 this uh, 302 56 interest was 97 the total payment was 820 so if it's a fixed payment or fixed lease uh, the interest will fluctuate everything else will remain the same you can change the amount usually what happens is you have a monetization schedule based on that you pull up the numbers and enter the amount okay I assume that this entry remains same so I'm not changing anything so I'll just simply post it again it will give you that update and you say yes on it I will remember and go post the entry and then we'll update the system uh, the recurring entry at the back so that you remember how it's going to happen next month okay and that's it that's how you recall the entries and record that for the month end <clears throat> so that's how you will record the payment of your bank charges or any lease payments it doesn't matter as a lease payment or any other payment if it is uh, something that you have you know there's a recurring payment that's happening every month you can end up recording a similar kind of a recurring transaction and save them so that way next month 
all you're gonna do is just recall that entry, change the amount, and then you're done with that, okay? So that's how you will do the recurring transactions and it gets posted in a general general. Now, the next entry that we have is recording of a drawing. So the drawing is when the owner is withdrawing money from the company. So drawings can be recorded in two ways. You can either record a drawing in a journal journal, so which is simply adapting the drawing account and creating the bank account the same way that we recorded the lease payment and the bank charges. Or the other way we can do that is we can do that in the paper march where we select, we create a vendor with the owner name and then record the payments through, uh, through make other payment, which is miscellaneous payment. Okay. Both the entries are right. Uh, it's just a matter of that how comfortable you are recording that in a journal and journal journal versus in a payable as a miscellaneous payment. I think the book shows you to record that through miscellaneous payments. So I'll do the same thing as well. Uh, for me, both the methods are correct method. So if I'm recording the drawing, so let's assume the owner withdraw $1,000 from a company on April 20th. Okay, so here I'm going to change my session date to April 20th. And then after that, I'm going to go into payment, pay expenses. And then here I'm going to select the vendor, which is the owner name. So I don't have the owner name here. I'm going to create his name. I'm going to say Jerry Tyson. And in this case, I'm not going to do a quick ad, uh, sorry, uh, one time vendor. I'm going to do a quick ad. That means it's profile gets created and I can enter the information about his profile and put the address and all that other information in that, in that profile. Okay. Now the GL account that I'm going to select here is the drawing account because he's taking the money and we know it's going to be debiting the drawing account. And here we're going to say cash. Withdrawal by owner and we put the amount which is 1000 obviously no taxes applicable no invoice number if you want you can just put the month which is April 2022 so you know when that happened and here if you want you can just put the comment right here as well and then now we just check the general entry and debit drawing account and credit bank checking account. Okay. Then after this, what you do is you are going to look at your journal entry and make sure the, the entry so, uh, so the you can put the comment, which could be the same comment, or you can say cash draw by owner for the month. Whatever information that you feel is relevant, you can put that here. And then we already checked the journal entry, and now we're simply going to go ahead and post that. Okay, uh, did I post it? Okay, so it gives you confirmation. Press OK and then your entry is posted. Okay. So that's how you will record a payment of your uh, of your invoice. I mean uh, payment of your the owner's withdrawal gets recorded using accounts payable module. Okay. If you were to record that through a company journal journal, so you can just simply do the same thing. Create a journal journal, put a source as bank statement, put a comment as uh, cash withdrawal by owner for personal use and select the GL account, which is debit to the drawing account, put the amount here and then credit to your bank account, put them on the credit side and then post it, okay? At the end of the day, what you're doing is you're posting a general entry, but with the paper module, when you record that you can select the vendor, so that way the vendor name is there and then you have more historical information and who the check was issued to, okay? So I think that's, Pretty much what the important part was from this is uh, doing 
and the non-merchandise discount and looking at the uh, payment using a credit card or a debit card and then uh, recording a payment uh, which is using miscellaneous payment for different things. Uh, the other thing that's important that we need to look at is your HST, okay? Uh, so now HST is an important topic because obviously that's something that you will be doing not on a daily basis, but yes, definitely you're doing on a periodic basis, okay? So when I say periodic basis, is depending on your company structure. If your company is doing the HST filing on a monthly basis, then you have to remember to to calculate your HST and also make a payment on that, a payment of that by 15th of the following month. Uh, if you're doing the HST on a, on a quarterly basis, the HST is due the end of the following month. Okay, let's assume that this company uh, is doing the filing on a quarterly basis and the last quarter ended was March 31st. Okay. So that means that you are going to be making a payment by April 30th for the HST that's owing as of March 31st. So in that case, what you have to do is first you have to calculate how much HST you owe to CRA. Okay. So for that reason, what we have to do is we have to go into reports, look at the financial statement, look at the trial balance, and we're going to pull up the trial balance as of March 31st. I think we cannot go to March 31st. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Okay, well, we can't even pull the April 1st financial statement. The reason is that because uh, this file that we opened the twice, file we started with April 15 as the transaction date. But if you are working on the file that you started with chapter, uh, with chapter 3A, you may be able to pull up the trial balance as of March 31st, which is April 1st, okay? In this case, in this situation, I have to give you the information as how much is the HST collected on sale and how much is the HST paid on expenses on the HST. So if you go back to your test book, this is the information that would have been given to you in exercise 3A3, okay? And I say that on March 31st, which is April 1st, this was the HST charged on sales. This was the HST paid on purchases. That means that you owe the CRA $1,088.11. So your step one is always calculate how much is your HST, okay? You can either pull that up from a balance sheet or you can look at the trial balance. And then from the trial balance, you look at both of these accounts and then the difference is what you owe to CRA, okay? It doesn't matter how you get the information. What it matters is that you need to know the exact date, which is March 31st that you are remitting for, and then pull up the balances on those accounts on that day. So once you're done with the step one, then the step number two is recording the payment of that. To record a payment for HST payment, you go into pay and say pay expenses. So you're making a payment to who you receive a journal, which is CRA, okay? And then you put a check number if you're writing a check, okay? Now you have to make sure you put the detail here. And here we're gonna say is HST for March 31st, 2022. And then you're going to put the amount, which is the amount right here which is 1,730, not 1,730. The amount is 1738.25. 1738.25. And then you have to select the another line. So this is the amount that we are paying to CRA, but we have HST paid on purchases. That's the money that we're going to get back from CRA. So we will select that account HST on paid on purchases. And here we're going to say HST paid on purchases. And then we put a date as March 31st as well. So for up until that period, how much HST we paid 
and then this amount has to be entered as negative because we are going to get a credit for that amount so let's look back how much is the amount for that 650 14 650 14 so I'm going to double check the amount is correct 1638.25650.14 under the references we can say that is January to March 22 and then we look at the general entry so the general entry will be debit to the HRC charge on a sales because that's the money that we are going to be paying okay, well did we not enter the HST on purchase minus okay no so we have to make sure this is done in negative because technically if I don't it's going to assume that I'm also making a payment for that but that's not the case we are claiming that money okay See, now you see that the net amount is what we're going to pay to CRA. So now I'm going to go back to my general entry and see the HSC charge on sale is 1738 HSC paid on a purchase is the credit that we're claiming and the net money that we have to pay to CRA will be $1,088.11. Okay. Now once that is done, if you have a comment, you can put a comment saying uh, remitting HSD for Q1 2022. Okay, and now you go ahead and post that transaction. Okay, so this was a case when you are making a payment. So now there could be a situation where you, where you may have more HSD that you collected, so you, uh, more HSD that you pay than or what you have collected. In that case, you have to record this entry, not in this module, but it will be done through a general entry or it could be done in your you receive a module where you're going to make that entry as a miscellaneous receipt and assume that same entry but the amounts will be different and then you're going to be collecting that money from CRA after you file the HST okay so that amount will stay in the receiver module not in the paper module Okay, so now that will be it for the make uh, remittance of the HST. So now what we have to do is we have to look at if there is any HST, if there is any invoice that we have and we wanted to make any changes you can always click on the adjust icon and make the changes to the invoices and the same thing I uh, usually now this is one thing that, that I always uh, tell the students uh, is anytime you're recording a payment and you made a mistake on it and you know that you issued a check for that amount in that case you always wanted to avoid the check and rerun the payment because in in a situation where you already issue a check you cannot take the check and revise the check okay so it's always a good practice that you wipe that check and you do the same thing in a system you go in and find that payment that you made right so for example if I made a payment for example to Jerry Tyson and you want to say okay this was not a thousand I have to reissue it for two thousand dollar what I will do is I will reverse this payment that means voiding this payment and then rerun the check with the different amount okay so that's something that i would say it's important for you to know when you are recording these transactions so the other thing that i that was also covered in this chapter is when you're recording a purchase and whilst you find out we added a new inventory item okay so it could happen any time is that you actually got an opportunity to buy a new item in the business to sell it to your client so you can either create that inventory item in the separate module which is inventory module you add a new item before you start, start recording a transaction but if you did not add a trans uh, add a new inventory you are in the purchase invoice and you're creating a new invoice okay and then here 
uh, we'll select the vendor and then here we select the invoice so let's assume the invoice number is one two three four and then here you have the option to double click on it it will show you the list of all the inventory but if that inventory is not in the list right here you can just click on this add a new inventory item and then select and then it will take you to this option where you have where you are adding a new inventory item so then in that case obviously i will give you all the information as what are the the details of that new item that you're adding you put the item number you put the detail as what the item description is put the minimum level select the information about the pricing link them to the appropriate asset revenue cost of goods sold account and this is a, a build item which is you're building for a few items you can do that here as well if the tax is applicable you just select it once you select that item then obviously that item gets added okay so let's assume that so in the number i'm going to say doors large and then put the description as large doors doors and then here we'll put minimum quantity 20 the unit is each the pricing is i'm selling it for uh 250 the preferred price is 2.25 then link them to the asset which is the inventory account uh, this is the inventory account the revenue account is the sales account cost of goods sold is only one account i don't have to variance account so it doesn't though this is not applicable go back to the taxes it is hsd exempt we're gonna say no and then if you have a detail you can enter the detail as what the comment what is this product if you have a picture of that you can select that if you have a thumbnail that you want to use for that item you can also do that as well so i don't have that information so i'm simply going to say save and close now that item is added and shows up here and then you see how many you're buying 200 you select that in and then you select how much you're buying it for because remember what we set up is the sale price not the cost so we select the price that you are paying you enter that here and obviously it links everything automatically to the particular GL account and then once you're happy with that the term is correct you simply go ahead and post that transaction okay so this is where you can create a new invoice and also make a payment sorry uh, also create a new inventory item and then record that invoice at the same time as well okay so that being said uh, that is uh, the recording of the invoice the last type of transaction that we have is making a payment to the credit card so if you have a credit card and you are recording all the payments for that credit card so whenever you're buying credit card purchases you're recording that in this module that means that your credit card will have updated balance in your state uh, in your uh, in your system okay then now when it comes to making a payment it will be a very straightforward thing to do all you're going to do is go into a payment and here we're going to say pay a credit card bill so when you pay a credit card bill system will tell you how much is the outstanding balance so here you're going to say okay which credit card are you making you're making a credit card bill so right here because i have not recorded any credit card transaction it tells me that there's no outstanding amount for that credit card okay but if you have transactions that you have been recording it's going to show how much amount outstanding for that credit card and then you are going to go in and see if there was any additional fees that you have on the credit card statement if there's an interest accrued on that you put that number here and that will add that number and then it will show up how much payment you are going to make and then the system will do the entry for you which will be a debit to the credit card payable and debit to the interest or bank charges if there are any in this amount in this column and there will be credit to your bank account okay and then you simply click post and then you will get that entry posted in the system so for me 
I don't have that because I've not recorded any credit card transactions in this uh, in this chapter 3b but you are going to be doing that when you complete the exercise okay. uh, why don't I do this I'm gonna record a, a purchase let's make a purchase let's see that I'm buying office supplies but in this case I'm buying office supplies with the credit card invoice number is 543 and the date is April 10 here I say 20 calculators that I purchased for the office and the price was six dollars uh, $15 per item and the HST is this and that's going to the office supplies no discount applicable okay and now our SEMA general entry will be a debit to the purchases debit to the HSD and credit to your credit card payable and I post it okay now I go in on April 30th and April 30th is when you are making a payment to the credit card so to do that I'll go into a payment and pay credit card bill when I click on it I select the credit card hmm. Still not showing up the Okay, that's why it does actually. Is April 30th? See, here's credit card balance is 339. It remembers your balance with the total purchases you did. Now, assume that there is no credit card or interest fees that we have, and then you have to mention how much money you are making, how much payment you're making. Let's say we're making a payment of $339, and then we check the entry. The entry will be debit credit card payable and debit a uh, credit bank account. And then we click post and we're done. Okay, so this covers up all the entries that we're supposed to do, all the different types of transaction in chapter 3B. I think the highlight of the chap transaction that you may expect to see in your in your final exam is one, recording of non-merchandise discount number two recording of the gsd hsd remittance number three is recording of a payment uh, credit card or debit purchases and definitely recording of the entries with uh with the discount which we already covered that in chapter three as well where you could have a discount which is a cash discount or a sales or a uh, early payment discount how you will record that okay so those are the important things that i'll definitely expect you guys to remember for your final exam from this particular module okay so after you finish with that there are a few reports that definitely some uh, you will print one will be your vendor age report which will tell you what outstanding vendors we have on a particular date so you always print the detailed report so it will show you how many outstanding vendors we have Okay, so that's pretty much the list of all the vendors and you close it then the other report that you have not printed but it's important for you to know is banking do a check log because if you're printing a lot of checks it is important that you print the list of the checks for the particular month that you're working on so let's assume that we just finished the April month you pull up the April statement and and shows you all the checks that you have printed. If there was any checks that you wanted, it will also show those ones here as well. Okay, so definitely export that report into a PDF. So students who have been uh, doing this, uh, I think it is important that you know, whenever you click export, it gives you the option to save the different types of reports. So you always wanna make sure you option you select it is always a PDF option whenever you're saving these files. Uh, what else is important journal entries so definitely you have all the different types of journal entries so you can if I ask you to print all the journal entries you will do all the journal entries if I say that I only want to see the purchase transaction you select the purchases if you want to see all the transactions that is payment transaction you select the payment transaction that's the payment uh, module so it will just simply show all the payments which is miscellaneous payment or a payment for outstanding invoices credit card payments 
or the payments for the HSD, all those will be listed under the payment. But most of the time when I'm asking, I'm always asking all the entries so I can see what happened for that month. So you show me all the general entries. Financial statements, you have balance sheet, income statement, trial balance, cash flow statement or cash flow projections. I could ask you any of those things. So you wanna make sure you know how to print them as well, okay? Uh, what else? Inventory, if I ask you inventory summary, you can print that here. And that's pretty much it, what I'm expecting from you guys from this chapter. Okay, so I think this is it from chapter 3B. So I will have you guys complete chapter 3B. After you complete chapter 3B, you have the reports that you can print you are checking your reports already as you work through the transaction so i don't think there's anything that you wanted to be looking at after you complete chapter 3b what important is after you complete complete chapter 3b i want you guys to go back to the channel exercise 3b1 networks and then complete that on your own once you complete that you will definitely go back and look at those entries and compare it with the answer that are posted at the end of the week, okay? So if I'm not posting it and you have completed it, there's only two ways you can check your answers. You can speak with other peer members, the other classmates, and compare your answer and see if you made anything, if you made any mistakes and discuss that with your group member or the, or the person you're studying with. And if you don't have somebody you work with, you can always visit the accounting center. They have the answers. You can compare the answers over there and also sit down with the peer tutor to discuss if there's something that you're not clear or you don't need more clarification, okay? And if you want to speak with me about any of those particular transactions from 3B or the channel exercise, you can write those things down and bring it to the class in the next week class and then we can discuss that in the class as well, okay? All right, guys, this is the end of the lecture and I will definitely see you guys in person class on Wednesday. Until then, take care of yourself and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.